This episode of Film Ride is brought to you by Domain.com. Today on Film Ride, we go fast, real fast. supposed to have coffee, but I wonder what it tastes like. My sandwich! What?! been here the whole time. You're lying. You're lying. Josh! Over here! Did you take money out of my wallet? When? Just now. How? I'm down here. Good point. Weird. It was just wind, and then, no money. It was Emily. No. Yes? She's down there too, Josh. I don't know how you're doing this, but I know it's you. Prove it. You're the idiot! Not me! Welcome to Film Ride, the show that takes some mystery out of the effects and techniques of going to some of my favorite Hollywood hams. I'm your host, Ryan Conley, and I got me one of them fancy email thingies. Just saw X-Men Days of Future Past, and it got me thinking, have you guys ever done super speed effects? No, we haven't, but that has been something that has been one of the most requested effects for years, so today, we did. Well, not today specifically, but you get what I'm saying. There's a lot of ways to do the super speed effect, and this type of effect can go horribly wrong very fast. I'm looking at you, First Twilight, which made it look like his legs were windmilling around the sides of him, like a Hanna-Barbera cartoon. Similar to the transporter effect, I wanted to do something extremely simple. And after I examined a few shots from X-Men, I realized that the way that they were doing it really was simplistic. The only thing that complicated their shots was the use of motion-controlled cameras. But let's jump into this like Scrooge McDuck into a vat of money. You really? So first thing, let's take a look at the original shot before we did anything to it. Emily acting out, quick move in the direction I wanted her to go, then she runs to the next spot and acts out the last motion of coming to a stop. And this continues to each spot as we go through that whole piece. At each stop, I also hit her with some wind from a leaf blower which has really come in handy over the last few years. I highly recommend grabbing yourself a leaf blower. A cheap one will do just fine. There are so many uses for visual and special effects. Plus, you can do this. What are you doing? Then we're gonna grab our clean plate, and that is it for shooting. Next, we're gonna move into our editor to start lining up the clips, and that's when we're... There it is again. No, not yes. again. Sound in the attic. Ryan, there's nothing in the I attic. I have been telling you nonstop there that there is, is something. I am hearing it all night. Do this. There's something up there. 
there. We gotta call the cops. The cool thing about this is you don't necessarily need compositing software like After Effects to do this. You can do the whole thing in editing software. So here's what we're gonna do. We will put the rough edit together by dropping in the first shot of the actor right before the actor makes a quick move. Once they start that move, we're gonna cut it right there. Then we're gonna bring in our clean plate, which we only need a few frames of here. I'm gonna use about three frames of the clean plate. Then I'll bring in the shot of my actor in the next position, which I will start right as she is finishing her entry move. And now we have this. Not done, of course, but it's already looking pretty good. And there's only one more thing to finish this off and make it work, and that is a blurred image of our actor. So I'll grab one frame from the video of the actor, drop it in, put in the 16 point garbage mat, set a shape around our actor, then drop in directional blur, jack up the blur amount and change the direction to be horizontal. Now we will take that one frame of the blur and move it toward the edge of the frame where we want it to seem like our actor was supposed to be running to. Then I will frame forward twice and add another single frame of blur. That way I have one frame blank in between these two blurred frames. Then I'm gonna move it next to the area that she's going to end up stop the runningness in. And now we have this. Of course we have the sound effect in there as well, but that's it. The entire effect, it is really just that simple. Now, you can take this a bit further, stylize the motion blur out a bit and refine everything else, which it'll all be the same idea, just a few more bells and whistles. The main thing about this shot, the two things that really sell the effect would be the wind on the actor and the actor's motion. Here's an example. In this shot, we're gonna have no movement and no wind. Doesn't work at all, it has no sense of movement and it's really boring, but now the exact same thing, only change is going to be the wind and the movement of the actor. It makes all the difference, which goes along with what I've been saying about using physical elements in camera to help sell visual effects that you're doing in post. Now a quick break and we're gonna take a look at one more way to do this effect. Domain.com is the place to go if you're trying to get yourself up on the internet. if you wanna get yourself a website to promote you, your stuff, your business, whatever it is, a product that you came up with to save the world from destruction of some kind. Sounds lucrative. You can use Domain.com, you should use Domain.com because they have that reliable and affordable hosting plan. They got the Domain Discovery service to help you pick the right name for you. And if you use coupon code FILMRIOT at checkout, you get 15% off your domain name and web hosting. So when you're thinking domain names, my friends, think Domain.com. Logo. Okay, so I use the same technique that I showed you before in all of the shots except one, this one. Here is the original shot for that, Emily just running to her next spot. So now I could take that into After Effects, add time remapping, then hit a keyframe right at the point where she's gonna start her move, then another when she finishes her move. Then I'm gonna drag that second keyframe back to where the move only takes a few frames. I did five here. And now, this is what we're getting. We go frame by frame for spots, jumping from one to the next. To make this work, we have to add in some motion blur. My favorite plugin for this is Real Smart Motion Blur, but there is one that comes built into After Effects called CC Force Motion Blur. So I'll drop that one on, set the samples around 255, the shutter angle to over 300. And now if we go frame by frame, you can see we have that nice motion blur streak action happening like we want. The downside is you can't have anything in frame other than your actor that- No, keep going. There's nothing, there's no sense. You can't have anything that's moving other than your actor. Otherwise, it's gonna look all crazy like this. You also have less control over the motion blur, which I don't love. This way is definitely a bit easier since you are letting the software do all the work. It definitely works, but I do like the other method better. For the shots with another actor in it, I just use the same technique I showed you from the first time and then mask my second actor in using the same idea as a cloning effect. No. But that's it for today. As always, you can find me on Twitter right here. And if you were looking for some sound effects, like the ones I use in this episode, we use the ones from Video Copilot's Motion Pulse Pack, which you can find right here. That's it for today's 
I'll see you. Thanks. All right, that's it. We're checking this out. Come on. Okay, I'll hold it. No way! Why do I have to go in the attic? You're older, you go! No, I don't want to lick Death's mouth. I don't want to lick Death's mouth either! I'm your boss, so go. But... No... I told you! Yeah, she had coffee. Get busy living, or get busy dying. Ride or die. Live free or die hard. Go in the attic or Emily's going to f***ing shoot you. Still scared. 